I was in my early 20s, and I found myself handcuffed by student debt, family dysfunction, and what looked to me like exclusively and exquisitely shitty career options <laughs> cleverly designed to build or maintain my credit score. <laughs> so I, along with said credit score, declined. <laughs> Instead, I bought a one-way ticket to Barcelona with $200 in my pocket, leaving everything I owned in a Pasadena apartment for anyone who wanted it. I bummed around the city picking up odd jobs, English tutoring, nannying, translating on a Russian merchant marine tall ship, <laughs> until I eventually found a steadier job at an English school on the outskirts of Barcelona whose main requirements were that I accepted payment in cash and spoke any kind of English, even American. <laughs> and that's where I met Neil. We rode the same train to and from the city. We rolled our eyes at the same people. And one night after class and a few very too much many beers, he cocked his head looked into my face for too long and said, you have really big eyes. <laughs> and from then we were rarely apart. <laughs> this most beautiful boy, this Englishman, a permanent laugh in his green eyes just for me. He was a painter, a fighter, a chef. He brought homemade meals across town on buses and metros in beat up aluminum stew pots, <laughs> secured with bungee cords. He gifted me paintings. He introduced me to his friends. We spent days in my tiny flat listening to Chet Baker and Super Tramp rolling our naked bodies in glitter to mark each other as our own. We taught our classes in the bar, and we extended our time there into the early mornings. Soon, we were moving beyond casual dates, auditioning for permanent parts. And so we headed off together to the south of Spain for Holy Week. Between processions and celebrations, we talked and drank our way through the old city of Granada, telling our foundational stories and monitoring each other for signs of trouble. Will he flinch at the details of my trauma? Can he handle my dueling insecurity and drive for achievement? <laughs> or worse yet, will I uncover some deep-seated, hardline worldview that I didn't know would be a deal breaker, but definitely is, like he doesn't like Tom Waits, or <laughs> he thinks Star Wars is dumb. <laughs> but I could find nothing but more and more reasons to love him, and more tapas, and more wine, and more of everything we drank, and love drunk, we drank some more, and I tried my best to drink like an Englishman. And at the end of the night, or the day, we fell into bed exalted, delirious, and completely intoxicated. Nothing this wonderful had ever happened to me. I woke up in the same mood, gazing down at him, sleeping, feeling content, hopeful, love in my guts, Gazing down, gazing down, not from the bed beside him, but somehow from a few feet above him, in the closet, <laughs> next to the bed. And what I'm sitting on in the closet are his clothes. And my God, it's wet. It's wet because I am actively peeing. <laughs> A lot. I'm still drunk and half asleep. 
and the relief in my bladder overrides everything else. Even though panic is now rising to compete. I reach for the toilet paper. God damn it. I am in an armoire. <laughs> How did this happen? I'm terrified of waking him, but even more terrified of waking up myself. Because if I wake up and I'm still in the wardrobe, it's over. I pat around until I find some dryish socks, clean myself up, and go back to bed. I waited in agony for sunrise and mourned what could have been true love. When I was a kid, if I left a dirty dish in the sink, if I forgot to feed the dog, there was always a price to be paid. If I yawned in church, if I got caught listening to punk or boy George, it was always my fault. And still, on that hot night, hot night in April, I knew that nothing I had ever done could come anywhere near the depravity of having appropriated this man's rucksack as my toilet. <laughs> I fully expected the punishment would be swift, severe, and however painful, <laughs> fully deserved. He found me up early, rummaging through the bags, animated. Come on, let's get some breakfast. I think these clothes would look great on you. Come on, let's go, I'm starving. I presented him with a few piss-adjacent things <laughs> that were only mildly damp. I couldn't figure out how to tell him, and I couldn't figure out how not to tell him, so I didn't say anything, and we set out for the day. <laughs> the man smelled lightly of piss. <laughs> but I held him close anyway. Since once he discovered what a repugnant soak I really was, I was sure I'd be on the bus back to Barcelona alone. Now Granada during Holy Week is hot and crowded and by early afternoon, we were ready for a break. Too far from the room to go back, I'd made sure of that. <laughs> I kept imagining his drying clothes, mixing with the afternoon Andalusian heat, creating a toxic backdraft <laughs> of urine vapor that would envelop us as soon as we opened the door. And I really couldn't think any farther ahead than that because I planned to die right there <laughs> on the spot. Poof. <laughs> but eventually we came across a theater showing a film about a retired bullfighter who can't stop killing his neighbor's pets and then his neighbors cheerfully, compulsively. I envied them. A swift dagger to the base of my brainstem at that moment would have been a mercy. He still hadn't said anything about the smell, but I would have to tell him. And then our love would be an almost the theater would become the time before. I watch it all from a distance, wanting to remember how it was to be desired, how it once felt to be hopeful about the future. Because at least while the movie was playing, it was possible to believe that everything could still work itself out. But now it's over and the panic is back and I'm looking for a quiet place to plan my escape or confession. Indie movie house bathroom, black wallpaper, white fixtures, cool and quiet and perfect. I lock myself in, double check the door, and sit down for a much needed and honestly hours overdue shit. 
I like this guy. I am desperate. Maybe I could spill some red wine on my shirt and needing to do laundry suggests we throw in a few of his things as well. Or I could spill the bottle over both of us. Or better yet, I could sneak past him and get the next bus back to Barcelona alone. Someone jiggles the door handle. I've been in there too long. I reach for the toilet paper. Where the hell is the toilet paper? I'm used to playing the hide the light switch game in foreign bathrooms, but toilet paper is usually right next to the toilet, unless. Fuck you. You design happy, ass washing, Euro fucking cunts. Why? Why do you need more than one white porcelain bathroom conveyance? Because now I see the toilet paper across the room. And I realize that yes, I have just dropped a deuce in the bidet. <laughs> I'd like to tell you that I owned that moment. <laughs> that I planted a little American flag. <laughs> in my rancid ethanol lace dump and walked proudly out of that bathroom. But you know I didn't. <laughs> I duck waddled across to the actual toilet, trying not to drip. And then I attempted to relocate my shit to its intended receptacle. <laughs> Though I might as well have done it with my bare hands for all the good the toilet paper did me. Once I found it. A pair of damp socks would have come in really handy right then. <laughs> so I pull myself together enough to exit the bathroom and I leave behind my pride, a dirty bidet, and any chance at anyone ever loving me ever <laughs> again. <laughs> we head to a cafe for some tapas and I can't take one more thing in common, one more funny comment, one more shared obscure obsession, since soon he will know what I know. I'm gross. I am disgusting. I'm a rube. I am unfucking lovable Listen. I say, I have something to tell you. I know why your clothes smell funny. And I tell him about the closet and the clothes, and I wait for the hammer to fall. And this is what he tells me. My brother used to piss in our drawers. I knew a kid who took a dump in the middle of his kitchen floor while he was sleepwalking. <laughs> Apparently this kind of thing happens all the time. Although I'm the first woman he's known to do something like this. <laughs> and he seems almost proud. <laughs> I don't know this feeling. Some mixture of relief, disbelief, vertigo, even hope. I take a chance. Well, I say, if you think that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, 
I also just took a shit in the bidet. (laughs) And I'm pretty sure that's when we truly fell in love. (laughs) I've committed many sins since then. I killed our dog. I crashed a few cars. I kicked the shit out of a neighbor's blow-up Thanksgiving turkey because. I growl at people in public. And even now, I'm barely house-trained. But still, he loves me with a love that is patient, amused, illogical, impossible, really. But here I am, redeemed again and again. As I go through life in spasm and contortion, he is constant. 27 years in, he is constant. And I'm happy to report that in all this time, I've only ever shit the bed once. Oh, my goodness, give it up for Heather Bentley.